finances, you start cashing out. Yeah, you cash out becoming a coach. Go check it. The internet is there. Coaching is where people are making money. It's the next, permit me to say blood money. Huh? It's the third blood money in the world today because people are constantly looking for help. So if you're not a coach, I don't know what you're doing. And if you're a coach and you've not encouraged somebody else to become a coach, I, I don't know what to say. So ladies and gentlemen, we will move swiftly to the next part of today's program. And um, I will be calling on, um, on our coach, uh, on our guest speaker. But before then, let's get to know who our guest speakers are. Technical? Okay, so today's um, speakers, amongst our guest speakers, we have our main speaker. We have the, the heart of ILEAD, the head of ILEAD, um, the CEO of ILEAD, the man who fed the vision of ILEAD Global, the reason why we are here today. He is Coach Raphael Gini the master coach, Raphael Gine. The master coach, Raphael Gine, is an American of African descent based in Dallas, Texas. He is the CEO of iLead Global and a successful business tycoon. The master coach, Raphael Gine, is a living example of the teachings of great influential leaders, including John C. Maxwell, Bob Proctor, Tony Robbins, and Mance Monroe. Amidst acquiring wealth, he remembered his roots and took up the mission to share these same principles and teachings with every youth and adult with the desire to become great and help others exploit their maximum potential. I would also add here that the master coach Raphael Gine is also a recipient of the um, Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award from the former US President Barack Obama for his contribution to the employment disparities in the United States of America. And our next guest, we have Chinedu Iluwa. Chinedu Iluwa is a business consultant. He is a renowned um, figure in grass quarter farming. Excelling as a highly sought after business consultant with a passion for agriculture, he assists the Federal Ministry of Agriculture in organizing impactful training sessions and empowering empowerment programs. Beyond agriculture, Chinedu is a skilled digital marketer, leveraging his expertise to promote agriculture and, and advancement, his dedication to both traditional farming practices and modern marketing has earned him a well-deserved reputation as a vital and influential professional in agriculture and business. Our next guest is. And we would also be hearing from Mr. Andrew Mba, Mba Yoga. <laughs> Sorry if I didn't pronounce that well. He is an experienced banking professional with a track record ex of exceptional service, holding a bachelor's in finance and accounting a master's in public sector finance and a fellowship with the National Institute of Managers. He is equipped with diverse knowledge. As a relationship manager as, at the First City Monumental Bank, FCMB, he excels in managing high net worth clients, SMCs, 
and corporate. His, um, his skills include financial analysis, risk and assessment, and tailored advice. Adam to communication. He articulates complex financial concepts to clients of all backgrounds. Andrew stays updated on industry trends and enjoys family gathering, reading financial newsletters and engaging in charitable activity. His kind heart and um, being so open to learning and wanting others to learn is why he is here today. I see in the house South Africa, I see in the house Congo, I see in the house Cameroon, Nigeria. Thank you so much for being here. I see Ethiopia. Thank you so much for being here. Mr. Andrew, are you ready for us? Are you ready for us? Okay, I see that you are you are on transit. <laughs> yes, I'm ready for you. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Can thank you. you. Nicole, are you there? Yes. Let's have the screen, please. Okay, on today's on today's gathering, we'll be having a, a swell time, and I'll be dealing on a story about the increasing interest rate as an entrepreneur. It's my privilege to meet all of you wherever you are, because the world has made a global village with the internet. I'll be delving on the point about interest rates and how it affects business with a specific relation to Nigeria and a case study of our financial systems and our banking. In the first place, your business contest is and will remain uncertain. But if we get moving now, you can ride the waves of uncertainty instead of being overpowered by them. Over time, we've discovered our business and what we do in our daily lives has always been uncertain and has always been detected by the interest rate covering over things. And how would you define interest rate in a broad view? I will state the interest rate to the general pricing to the general pricing or the amount as proportion of a deposited or borrowed total interest per annum of an amount, which depends on the total sum, principal sum. As you know, this definition would emanate from, uh, from the Wikipedia. But in a general outlook, looking at this right now, we've had a growing interest rate over time. There has been a change from the last rates to a recent rates. These are all due to stemming the tide of inflation and other market indices, which affects entrepreneurs as a whole. The outlook on uh, indicators seen in the V shape is deteriorating, and there are uncertainties, retentions, inflation downturn of economic global growth 
And the cadres are pointing out, and the world looks more even weaker than before. Why is this so? The world today is ravaged with flood, famines, war, instigations of war, and all that. How can we stand this tide as entrepreneurs? It's very, very key. And narrowing this down to our own field of expertise or our own field of interest is actually what really determines what we're passing through. But we cannot, we cannot delve or we cannot deviate from the fact that this is actually happening and it's all relates to what we are actually feeling. Right now, the world is currently facing business, health, environmental challenges, such as a collapse of consumer demand, regulatory modifications, supply chain interruptions, increased uncertainty, unemployment, economic recession, mental health issues, and famine. But for the purpose of this speech and lecture, we'll be focusing more on the interest rate and how it affects us. Now, to navigate through this trauma, it is very vital for entrepreneurs to be agile to respond to today's changing environment in timely manner. The environment keeps changing. A lot of changes happens, economic policies and all that. As such, entrepreneurs should identify, focus, and swiftly address the key vulnerable areas to ensure their survival and business continuity. These main areas are finance, operation, business models, people, and processes. In depth, in these areas, you discover that these key areas actually influence the survival and continuity of every business model, no matter how little or large the business is. I have enumerated some points here, which I feel would be the strategies to survive this storm. Nigeria as a whole, in relation to other countries all over the world, faces the same, if not exact same situation as others face. Even if it's not em emphasized for you to feel it, you know very well that if you're keen with the financial informations and financial doings of your economy, you know very well that these are happening. As such, in order to survive, one of the bulleted points here I mentioned out here is you stay calm, balanced, and focused. I'll go through these points, mention them out, and briefly enumerate on some key areas. The second is access your current position. The third is treat cash as a king. The fourth is practice prudent pruning over aggressive cost cutting. And the fourth is streamline and fine tune. The fifth is focus on customer retention. The, fifth is, the sixth is focus on core competence. And then be a must have and embrace technology. As you can see from this point, it's all encompassing. The world as you have it right now is a gradual shift onto the next phase. And you cannot, as an individual or an entrepreneur, not be acquainted with these key handles for you to attain your next level. Would you talk about 
pruning your expenditure? Or would you talk about focus on your customer retention or technology? In this current phase, technology is part of us. And for every entrepreneur to, to achieve and sustain the next level of achievement, you have to incorporate this emphatic levels in every business venture that you're engaging or that you're driving right now you should think about these points because they will give you the next phase they'll give you the next achievable limits but for time i won't be able to enumerate deeply on this as you have it right now, our lead, our lead um, platform to, to bring this to you has been the I lead. And they've made this, this in a very, very concise and, 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 and narrowed point to help you see that there's been a change. And you can only achieve this change by working in line with it. But in that feat, you can only achieve this by keying in and contacting eyelid because there's been, this material is actually not, not, easy to understand because it's it's quite broad all the bulleted points and all, all all the points available here have been summarized in order to meet up with points but we're not here actually to just intimate you and bring to your notice about what is happening but we're here to give you a solution a solution to what you're facing in your society in your immediate community in order to keep you abreast of the challenges that will come and the challenges that are already here. So I, in my best suggestion, I would say, subscribe to ILA, get their contact to get a full download of everything and how you are to navigate through this storm. Well, the target right now is to Diversify revenue. Why would you diversify the re revenue? There's been a trending global rate of an increase in interest rate. The increase really translates to uh, trading activities, the pricing and the valuing of virtually everything financial. In relation to this, it will mean that narrowed down to the banking sector that all assets, all liabilities are repriced in order to meet up with the trending interest rates. Down to an, a conversation, in order to diversify revenue, we'll have to look in-depthly into where we are right now. and provide solutions for the next economy. Finance has always been the bane of global sustenance and survival. Diversifying our finance will give us avenues to manage our current cash flow. Next will be reducing expenses. As you know it, when times get lean, you've got to know what to do as an entrepreneur and to be able to spot small industries away from profit without stimulating knowingly what's discretionary and what's essential. 
anytime there's a financial st instability, whether it's a private or company shop for the first step is obvious. Due to economy or company shortfalls, to reduce discretionary expenses. Most companies high expense after salaries, pay leases and bills of their office space during a downturn. And look at this. If you can sublease some of this space to offload those costs, I must stay. And finally, look at the vendor output and decide if you can hold off some online advertising, web design, accounting, or miscellaneous services. These, among others, are avenues at reducing expenses. It is possible to go far with this. Marketing is important, even in the direst circumstances. Nonetheless, should you score every line item and treat budgets, will it make sense? Expenses has always been a pain in every business, whether we like it or not, whether we like it or not. And when this troubling and Troubling times come, it's always on all entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs to make the right decisions. One of those key decisions is expenses. You need to make the right pruning cost in order to meet up with your demands and make profit. Another area is to manage debt. As you know, debt compounds quickly when budget tighten. So pay it off while you have the cash. Following the four, four strategies, you should have cash to put towards paying down your debt faster. Starting by knocking down high interest rates and moving to other areas. It's also important, you know, to manage debt. Managing debt, uh, you could use other areas like restructuring, refinancing, liquidating, and others. These are other avenues that managing debt. Businesses cannot do without debt. As a matter of fact, they grow with debt. And as such, it is important to know how to manage debt. And the best way to manage debt, to have it minimized to a limit where a business operates without feeling much impact from the downturns in the economy. You all know that it's often difficult to cultivate relationships in the world of finances and building relationships can be single biggest factor in organization successful avoidance of bankruptcy or the domino effect. That business that are proactive in managing their finances will be set for success, regardless of when the next storm comes. Well, as it stands right now, we're having a global trend where businesses keep struggling to survive, to maintain their current status due to their debt level profile and ways in which they adopt to minimize their debt profile in order to meet up with their customers' demands and working capital needs.
managing debt will be one of the most key parts of our business, without which we would lose our focus as entrepreneurs. We cannot do with debt, but managing it effectively, effectively will give us a head on. In my bullet point, I'll say, align your life with what you really value during and after the phase. So goes the saying that wherever your focus goes, energy flows. If we actually seek to make a change in our environment, to make a change in our business fair, we will align our focus and our energy towards survival. And as part of a key of a business, which is continuity and survival, we would make decisions that keep our expenses in check, our debt refinancing and management in check, and our growth in check. I hope I've been able to, to bring to your attention the desire and the changes in our business fair. This can be a little bit cumbersome and quite uh, big, but trust me, we have a platform available for you to really understand the different approaches in every step on how to mitigate these storms that arise. You can predict these storms coming by following up with lead. We keep on briefing uh, various entrepreneurs and various startups about happenings in the economy and how we go about them. So be connected, subscribe to us, and we'll give you the tidbits about it. This can be cumbersome, but I believe you, but believe me, you would understand this when we go in depth into them analytically. Okay. Thank you for this time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Andrew. Um, thank you so much for that. I would say you were pretty much um, technical, 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 technical. But if I understand, let me say, um, basically everything that you've been saying is that the world as we know it is experiencing a lot of tumor. And uh, we as, um, as, people who want to survive as business people, we have to be able to take in some of the measures that you have identified for us. Stay calm, stay calm. Stay, stay calm is not easy. Oh. It's not easy at all, right? Um, your your bills, bills are piling. You have to take care of kids. Um, those who are working have just some small salary or no matter how big the salary is the expenses keep rising and um, as business people too we struggle a lot with debt and you have been able to make us understand that these are things that can happen and will happen as business people as entrepreneurs um be it at workplace be it in your business um but you could always find a way around it right mr andrew did i get that right Mr. Andrew, are you there? Mr. Andrew, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. I was saying, did I get it right? Did I yes, get that right? Did. Yes, you okay. did. You did. Okay. So um, we'll, we'll take a few questions. We may not be able to take a lot of questions, but those who want to ask their questions verbally, you can put on your you can put your hands up and I will call you to ask your questions. However, 
I will be the first person to start with a question. Um, my question for you, uh, Mr. Andrew, is when you, I, I heard you talk about diversifying as entrepreneurs that we have to diversify. Now, how would you advise that we diversify? Because um, you would see that with some persons, um, when, you, when they have to diversify as an entrepreneur or as a businessman or woman, um, I, they could begin with, um, say for example, they, they go into the water business. So they start producing uh, maybe the bottle water or the sachet water. And um, in order to diversify, then they move into the agri sector. Okay, so the agri sector, perhaps they would be um, into pro um, production of cassava, or maybe they could be exporting um, the tuba cassava. Uh, and then maybe they want to diversify again, they, they now move into building a school. And, um, and maybe the school could be like a school for science. And then um, they want, so they just do different things. And with other persons with diversifying, they will just stay on the same lane. For example, I, I go into the production of water. So I'm making bottle water, I'm making sachet water. I can then decide to make a different kind of water that has some form of, um, some form of elements or nutrients in the water, some special water. And then maybe also decide to do um, a soda drink. So I have, maybe I could do something similar to Coca-Cola, something similar to, to, um, to Fanta. Uh, I could go into the juice production. So what I'm saying is you could find out that when other persons want to diversify, they are doing the same thing. They are doing related things and others in diversifying, they would diversify in areas that are not related at all. How would you advise um, knowing that you work with small businesses and you also work with big business owners, how would you advise is actually the right, the right track to follow as an entrepreneur? Would you want to give me loan in your institute, understanding the fact that I have businesses that don't relate to each other? So those are like two questions. Okay. Um, first of all, handling your question, for an entrepreneur, diversification would not mean changing your line of business. If you're into production of pure water and then you go into production of Gary or another line of business, let's say packaging of uh, Zobo drink into bottled Zobo drink, that will mean a very different line of production. Diversification in my own context will mean diversifying ways at achieving your own business. Let's say you're into production of pure water. Diversifying would mean how can you achieve and meet up with demand at effectively low cost without spending much. How can you diversify your expenses over time? Now, we all know that these different spheres of businesses have different costs in relation to their spheres of activity. In dealing with SMEs, we've discovered over time that all businesses have their varying costs in line with their own sectors of expertise. Now, the time it takes, the resources it takes, and all that to change from your own sphere of specialization to the other would cost you within that short time frame. As such, I would advise any business owner to switch without making proper research. Meanwhile, you can achieve optimum production capacity. You can achieve optimum growth by looking inward. 
your expenses, your income, your areas of higher demand, your areas that you make up higher revenues. As we have it right now, demand is there, but you need to really identify and tailor your production activities to suit what you're really into. From the financial aspect, we've discovered right now that most SMEs have a downturn in their subscriptions and their sales, which really affects their turnover and also their net worth. So diversification would mean to them, how would they be able to show up what they have been doing in order to remain in that same business? For example, yeah, okay. For a business that is into production of bottled water, you could change your market niche from supermarkets in CBDs to open markets where the demand is scattered and really demanding, unlike the CBDs that is tailored towards the pattern of eating, the pattern of spending, and the rest. You could go to the open markets and have that in different ways. You could, you could strategize your list of suppliers based on those that are on the open market. It's not structured, but it gives the results. That would be what we would term as diversification. Instead of using the structural way where, you know, in the supermarkets, there are like 800 to 1,000 demand per a bottle of bottled water to the open unstructured market where you have three trucks to three trucks demand of bottled water. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Andrew. Time is not our friend right now, so we will not be able to um, go so deep, deep, deep. And I see that there are questions in the chat, but what I'll do, um, our event manager, can you please help us take notes of the questions in the chat and we will forward it to Mr. Andrew and Mr. Andrew will help us answer them and we'll send it to those who have asked the questions so that we can um, we can round up on time as the time has been scheduled for. Thank you so much. Uh, people, can you give Andrew a heart if you have learned something from him? Let's give him a heart, let's show him some love. Um, thank you so much. I truly do, do appreciate your efforts and your time um, sharing with us today. Thank you so, 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 so much. Thank you. And um, I want to say happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Um, the voice is also great to sing. I would have sung for you. <laughs> Wishing you, you all the best. You. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, um, technical, are you there? I don't see people putting on their cameras. I don't. I don't get it. Are we still eating the Sunday rice behind the cameras that we are camera shy? Huh? We seem to be camera shy. We don't want our faces to be seen. What's happening? What's happening? Let's see your cameras come on, please. Let's see the cameras come on, please. Okay, so we will take a short break um, for a minute and, um, and we'll be back to hear the next speaker. Thank you. Technical. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I'm sure we've been able to stretch ourselves a bit. Um, this was just to take us off for a second and bring us back to center. Okay, so we will be listening to our next guest speaker. Um, I see that we are, our cameras are still down. Why? Our cameras are still down. We should have our cameras open. Now, our guest speaker, as we already learned about him, he is into farming, he is into um, digital marketing. And today he'll be sharing with us his personal experience on farming and how we can tap into that as entrepreneurs. When you say you are an entrepreneur, it means you are innovating. It means you have been able to think um, from the norm and create something, okay? And even when you are stranded, you are stuck somewhere. How do you get unstuck? And we have always heard this, that to get unstuck, you have to, you have to be innovative. So um, outside the fact that we are just talking about it, how about hearing from someone who has actually um, become innovative, who has thought of an idea and, and that got him unstuck? somewhere in his business. Mr. Chinedu, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Jay. Good afternoon, everyone listening and watching. My name is Mr. Chinedu Eluwa. Good afternoon, Mr. Chinedu. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Oh, thank you for the time. Can I proceed? Yes, you can. Technical, have you made him host? Co-host, so he can right share now. his screen. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, you can share your screen now. Okay, just a moment. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, 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 you can. Awesome, can. awesome, <laughs> awesome. Okay, so 
And perhaps you could open it a bit more. Yes, that's fine. So we're good to go? That's right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mr. Chinedu Elua, also known as Ezenchi. Ezenchi means the king of grass cutters. For perspective, grass cutters are, are bush meat. I can see that there are other non-Nigerians on this uh, platform, so it's better I, I clarify. Grass cutter is a rodent that uh, is uh, domiciled majorly in sub-Saharan Africa. It's what we popularly call bush meat, okay? They're also called uh, uh, cane rats because they like sugar cane. They used to invade uh, cane plantations back in the days. So I am a grass cutter farmer and I am also a digital marketer. Uh, I'm also the national president of Grass Cutter Farmers Association of Nigeria, okay? Uh, today, I'll be talking about strategic ways to think outside the box in business challenges. Strategic ways to think outside the box in business challenges. If you're an entrepreneur, three o'clock, okay? If you're an entrepreneur, it's important that you note that you must always think outside the box. Entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. Oh. If you're an entrepreneur, just have it in the back of your mind that you always encounter challenges. And most of these challenges are going to be treated, not the conventional way, but simply by thinking outside the box. In this particular uh, session, I'm going to be sharing with you the challenge I came upon and how I, I, how I was able to innovatively overcome it, okay? So we're going to be talking about my business journey and the power of creative thinking, okay? Now, it is important to understand that every business must have challenges, okay? Business challenges range from products being out of stock. Maybe when customers call you, you don't have any stock in, uh, at hand. Take for instance, when my father used to sell roofing nails. My father used to import roofing nails from China and sell in Nigeria here, okay? So most times when we place our orders, the goods will stay three to four months on the high sea before they get to Nigeria. When our customers come, we don't have goods to sell. Okay, so these are some of the challenges we had. Okay, business challenge can also supply chain disruptions. There can be a lot of issues that arise during the supply chain. There might be issues with the goods that you sent on transit. The vehicle might break down on the road. A lot of things might simply disrupt your supply. It's a business challenge. Fluctuating customer demands. Customers might opt for one particular product this particular season. Next season, you are hoping that they will opt for that same product. They will go, they will go for another thing. Cost, consumer behavior changes. It fluctuates and is a challenge. And also managing costs. Okay, these are some of the challenges businesses face. Okay, now let me tell you about my grass cutter story. Just like you can see in this image, this is what a grass cutter is. Okay, grass cutters are rodents, like I told you. I started breeding grass cutters on the 20th of March, 2012, after my national youth service, okay? After my national youth service, I bought a colony of grass cutter from a farmer and started breeding. Now, when I started breeding, the main challenge I had was people were coming to me to buy grass cutters, but because I had uh, grass cutters that were pregnant and some that were not pregnant, they hadn't given birth yet, I couldn't sell grass cutters to them. I couldn't sell these products, okay? It was an issue. How could I have, how could I, how would I have to how make money for my business when I don't have products to sell? It was a major challenge that I faced, okay? People were writing me, as in, we need grass cutters, sell grass cutters to us, but I couldn't sell because I didn't have any grass cutters to sell. What did I do? What did I do? I had to think outside the box. Now, what does thinking outside the box mean? Thinking outside the box simply means Thinking innovatively. How can you be innovative in solving the problems you have at hand? At the farm, we already had salaries to pay. We had uh, 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 medicines to buy for our animals, okay? We had uh, 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 fees to pay the government, things like that. But we couldn't do this because we did not have any funds. We were not selling animals at the moment. So what did I do? I simply embraced creativity. I devised a means whereby I could simply sell animals to these farmers, make money for myself, but not selling my own animals, okay? I devised a, a, a method I called DMM formula, digital middleman formula. What I simply did was, how could I generate funds 
to keep this business running. And then when our animals started giving birth and we had animals to sell, I went on the internet, okay, and started promoting my business. I leveraged heavily on Facebook. Facebook was my home. I leveraged on Facebook. I started marketing. I started promoting my grass cutter business. People started reaching out to me. I said, we want to buy grass cutter. We want a colonial. We want two colonies. We want three colonies. All right, no problem. How do you want it? When do you want it? I sealed the deal. All I simply did was to put a markup on the price I was selling. Okay? Some people were selling to me at 120,000. I would simply sell at 130,000. I would take the order, take my markup of 10,000 Naira, take the 120,000 Naira, and pay the person that supplied me the gas cutters I, I used to start my own farm. By so doing, I've made 10,000 Naira. Now, when you multiply that 10,000 Naira by 50 colonies, you are talking about serious money here, about 500K in a month. You see how, it, how easy it was for me to generate money to be able to pay my staffs, to be able to buy medicine for our animals, to be able to pay vets who would come around to see what was happening in the farm. I simply thought out of the box. If I had waited till six months or 12 months before I had animals to sell, now wahala, because my staffs would have left. Most of them would have left. The vets will come one or two times and say, this man is not serious. So it is a nah, nah, hello, hi, we'll go to the job. No. I simply thought out of the box. I created this formula. I went on Facebook, finished. All I simply did was, once in a while, even when I was not doing paid advertising, I would pay Facebook 500 Naira, 1,000 Naira, 1,500, 2,000 a day. And they would simply push my videos, my posts to more people. They helped me get more reach. And by so doing, I was able to get people who needed these animals. If you are, if you are not comfortable paying me and you are close to a farmer who I know, simple, I'll direct you to the farmer's place. You go to the farmer's place, you make payments for your animals and the rest. When you go, the farmer will send me my commission. From there, I will take my, my business service and save. I will, from there, I'll pay my salaries. From there, I'll buy medications and the rest. Business is running. Pending when my animals give birth. Okay, pending when my animals get better. That was all I did. That was the innovative thinking I brought in. Because if I had decided to wait six months, ah, no income six months, no problem. Oh. It was a huge problem. So by simply doing that and also leveraging on my uh, uh, vendor list, I built a network of people who sold grass cutters. Even before I became the national president, I built a network. So wherever you are in Nigeria and you needed grass cutters at that moment when I didn't have for sale, I'll simply refer you to somebody who had. They will send me my commission. I will simply keep using it to run my farm. Okay, so every entrepreneur needs to be innovative in thinking. You don't need to sit down and start talking that you are having challenges in your business. No, when I, when, I, when I joined my father in his trading business, before I graduated and went for my youth service, my father used to import, to buy nails from... Lagos, he sold roofing nails. These nails used to uh, roof houses, one inches and one, two inches and two and a half. Now, when he, when they brought that uh, nails from using a 911 truck from Lagos to Anambra on a chart, sometimes rain will beat some of those nails. Those are the business challenges I was telling you about when we started earlier. You know, when they bring it, I and my younger brother will have the duty of repackaging those things, and it was a lot of work. What did I do? I sat back and, and I called my father one day. I said, my, I said, chief. These things you're buying from Lagos, we can simply import these things from China. You don't need to do anything. I'll simply stay here. I write an email to, my, our China, to your Chinese suppliers, pay them here in Nigeria, and they will ship to us. He thought about it. He felt, wow, this, I've never really thought about it this way. He said, let's try it. We tried it, and our first container entered. He was very happy. Before my father died, we had imported 24 containers of roofing nails. That was innovative thinking. When these goods come into Nigeria, the, the second place they are open apart from the wharf is at our, our shop. When they open, see how smooth, how sweet the nails were. Unlike the ones he was importing, he was buying from Lagos. Okay? Mm. It's always good as entrepreneurs to think outside the box. Don't constrain yourself uh, uh, within the box, you know, looking for solutions. No, look out. There are a lot of things you can do to bring life into your business when there is no life. All you have to do is to think outside the box. Be innovative. There are a lot of things you can use around you to turn the situation of your business around. 
it all takes you agreeing and accepting within yourself to think outside the box. The moment you do that, your problem is half solved. Okay? What was the outcome of all these things I did? We were able to manage office costs. There was funds available to run office office day-to-day uh, uh, -day operations. We were able to adapt. We adapt to the situation. Even within that six to 12 months, we made good money wow. to sustain wow. us even to the second year. Okay? We leveraged on our existing resources. These resources, the vendor list we are there, my goodwill online was there. I simply leveraged on my name, Ezenchi, Chinede Luwa, Ezenchi Buruburu, people were helping me. I leveraged on it to get the outcome I desired, which is generating funds to run the day-to-day -day operations before we start having animals for sale. And above all, my customers, who were always reaching out to me for grass cutter, you are satisfied, which is the major thing every business needs, customer satisfaction. If your customer is not satisfied, I'd rather you are joking. Because it is only when he's satisfied that he'll be able to use word of mouth to tell his friend, I bought this thing from this guy, oh, he did well. Oh. He will tell his uncle, sir, this is where I bought it. Oh. He will go outside and be bragging. They will ask him, where did you buy this thing from? He will say your name because he's satisfied. If he's not, he won't do that. Okay, so these were the outcomes we generated. Okay, the results and benefits stem from innovative approach. The, the, the results and benefits, like I said earlier, increase customer satisfaction. My customers were satisfied. I supplied them the, the grass cutters they wanted. They were happy. I was happy. The person I sourced from was happy. Pending them when my animals came on board. We had growth in sales. We had growth in revenue. We also got had enhanced reputation for our business because I was seen as somebody who, who delivers. If you go online, go to Facebook and type Chinedue Luwa. Just go through my page or even type the hashtag Chinedue Luwa. You will see a lot of things about me that I've actually done. You will see testimonials, people telling me, thank you. Thank you for the animals you supplied also. This one, that one. That is the essence. My business reputation is high. As long as Nigeria is concerned, if you count 10 grass cutter farmers, you don't count me, you, you are joking. 99% of my customers have not seen me face to face. If everything is online. Go to my YouTube channel. They simply go to my YouTube, see me. Hey, hello, is this in a day lower? I'm watching you on YouTube now. The same way the governor of Benue State told them, saw me on Facebook. I was on boxers with my mother discussing at home. My phone rang, a Chinese number I picked. Who is this? Is this in a day lower? I said, yes. He said, the governor wants to speak with you. Hello, Chinedu. I'm watching you. If you listen well, you can hear your voice on the, on the background. Who is this? This is Governor Tom of Benue State. I like to see you're doing. Come and set up for me. That was how he got me. They never see me for I, nothing see me, how you want to see me. The internet is there. So every entrepreneur should always think out of the box. Imagine I was within my locality selling grass cutters. How many people go know me now? But I simply leveraged on technology, leveraged on social media to do what I do. And today I'm far better doing it because I've learned, because I've been consistent, I've learned how to do it more and more. So every entrepreneur, has to be innovative, okay? Take away for entrepreneurs. Every entrepreneur should embrace creativity and unconventional thinking. My dear, do not be reduced to, to, to believing that there is no problem to a situation in your business. Now, lie, yo, there is a problem, oh. All you have to do is to think. Be innovative. You don't need to think like Einstein. Einstein, a scientist, you don't be scientist, you be entrepreneur. <laughs> think around, think around. There are things you can use. Okay, there are things you can use to get yourself unstuck if you're stuck in your business. Okay, be adaptable and flexible in facing challenges. Always be adaptable, always be flexible. Don't say this is how you do it and you stick to it like that. No, sometimes your way is not always the way. Sometimes there's, a, there's an happier way, a shorter route. Look for it. Okay, also make the most of available resources. I tell people. A lot of resources are around you that are not leverage. Look at your phone, your telephone. The numbers yeah. on your phone that you will call that will buy you products are a lot. If you could simply sit down with your phone, take a paper and a pen, and then jot down the numbers you would want to call to make a sale or to follow up. Your resources are available around you. Leverage them. Leverage them. And last but not the least, you need to prioritize customer satisfaction for sustainable success. Listen. Whether you like it or not, hmm? 
the customer is the lifeblood of every business. Without the customer, nothing happens. It's only the customer who will give you, I call them the golden goose that lay the golden egg. They are the only people that will give you the money that you need for your business. Whatever you do is send it towards the, 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 the customer. If he's not satisfied, he will use his mouth to finish your business. But if you get him satisfied, ha, he will become an evangelist. He will preach. Okay, uh, 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 I, I'm not being paid to say this, but Oraimo, take for instance Oraimo. Oraimo products, I, I have about six to seven Oraimo products. And it all started from buying one. I bought one. They didn't, I didn't pay. They came to my house and delivered it. I tested it. I saw it was working and I paid. And I've been using it. And it has been working. And I've been buying more and telling others, all right, well, no, they pay me. Oh. But I, I am telling others, why? I am satisfied. That is how you, an entrepreneur, should look at your business. Make your customer the focal point. Ensure that they are happy. Whenever they are not happy, find a way. Find a way to, you know, as wage. Don't be say they will be happy 100% of the time, but whenever they are not happy, always find a way to assuage their sadness. You see that they will, they will be happy for it. Okay? So in concluding, it is important to think outside the box. It is very essential for every entrepreneur. Remember, remember, life does not work the way it works in your head. If you understand life that way, it will be easy for you to tackle problems as an entrepreneur. Okay? Embrace creativity. Be adaptable. Be resourceful. Resourcefulness is very important as an entrepreneur. Be resourceful. Don't wait for you to be told what to do. Always be one step ahead. Always be one step ahead. Le leverage on every resource you have around you to ensure you get the outcome you desire. And last but not the least, Remember that challenges can always lead to growth. Napoleon Hill said, if you look at every problem critically, you will see a seed of positivity in it. So do not see your challenges, your business challenges as things that will actually uh, uh, dampen your moral. No, see them as a stepping stone. See them as something that you can leverage on to get a better version of your business. The moment you do that, I rather you are good to go. Uh, I hope I, uh, this, I, I didn't want to take a lot of time. The first uh, speaker has taken a lot of time. I hope I've been able to, within this short frame of time, to uh, 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 help you understand that it is, it is valuable to be innovative. Okay? If nothing, when they say innovation, searching a day lower. Thank you very much. In case you have more questions, I use my WhatsApp contact, this is my Facebook. Okay, this is my seller store. You want to learn more things about uh, digital marketing? You can <laughs> talk to the eyelids I mean, and they will put you through. Thank you very much, uh, Julia, for this thank opportunity. You. I'm grateful, and thank wow. you for listening to wow. me. Wow! 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is so much i'm so excited thank you time. so much you're welcome. thank you're welcome. you thank you're welcome. you thank you thank you i mean i love this our thank first speaker just to tell us about all the troubles and you know the struggles and how it's okay to have a loan you know as a business person but here we are we the next speaker that comes and tells us look you can leverage so, you can leverage. You can so. leverage on the resources that are around you. Yes, you so. can leverage on technology yes, so. and not be so much in debt, you know, and make so much cool money. And yes. I mean, how realistic can this be? Guys, let's give the speaker some hearts if you connected with this presentation like I did. I mean, I connected so much, so much, so much. This is business made easy. Absolutely. You know, cashing out made easy. There's not always Absolutely. about it. There's not always about it. That's You're not thinking leverage. like Einstein. That's You're the making the leverage. money. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we'll just take questions. Um, we will soon get to hear from the master coach. Uh, before then, we would uh, we'll take some questions. I see on the chat here, Jay said, what was your toughest situation as an entrepreneur and how did you overcome? Okay. Aside being stranded with your 
um, grass quarters and not being, I'm wondering how to make um, supplies. What other difficult, tough situations were you in and how did you overcome? Maybe in just a sentence, if you can do okay. that. Uh, the, the, one of the toughest situations I have encountered as an entrepreneur was when I paid a supplier about 2 million naira to supply a former commissioner of uh, finance in Delta State, some grass cutters, and he failed to supply what I paid for. Okay? It was hell. The man was calling me from here. I was calling the supplier. Supplier was not picking. You know, it was, it was, it was tough. It was tough. The man said he was going to use DSS to pick me up and all those things. So I had to live on a here to track the supplier at Ogun State. I'm street smart. So when I got to Ogun State, the address he gave to me was a wrong address, was not a complete address. So with my street smartness and my innovative thinking, I was able to meander the town and got his location. You know, wow. when I got to his location, I went to the police, I made a report, they came and picked him and you know. And all said and done, that was just my toughest, uh, so far, that has been my toughest situation that I was able to overcome, you know, based on oh, my wow. innovative, innovative thinking and creativity. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. It makes me yeah. remember what the master coach said with us um, some time ago. He said, if you have to make a difference, if you have to be an entrepreneur, you, you should be ready to be different and not yes, minding so. people looking at you like a madman, you know? Yes, so. so it's not it's not about all the looking all nice and um, yeah. trying to make things so easy. You have to take your destiny in your hand. Yes, Thank so. you so much. It says it means that customer satisfaction is the principal objective of an entrepreneur. Yes, of course. yes, yes, of I course. agree. They are the golden goose that lays the golden egg for you. That's right. Okay, so um, we have Maria Claire from Ethiopia. She says, what do you do to be on, to be one step ahead? What do you do to be one step ahead? What do you do to be one step ahead? Research is crucial. Always research for advantages. It is only a fool who will not leverage on the advantages he or she has. Find out the advantages you have in your business. You have competitors. If you leave money on the table, your competitors will pick that money. So you have to find your advantages and leverage them. If your advantage is being outspoken, then by all means be outspoken. You can channel it to doing podcasts. You can channel it to doing vlogs. Just find your advantages and leverage on them. Then hide your weaknesses. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for that answer. You're welcome. Yeah, if you have and if you have questions, feel free to open your mic and just speak up. Feel free to open your mic and just speak up. We would um, call you out to ask your questions. If you have one, we can take one more question before we go into the breakout session. Okay. Um, so that we are able to catch up with time and come back to hear from the master coach. I want to say a very big thank you. Thank you so, so much for this presentation. Um, we truly do appreciate. Thank you. Maria Claire says, thank you for your response. I see Welcome. some love for you in the chat. Thank you oh, thank so you. much. Thank okay, you. so we'll be moving on to having our breakout session. The purpose for this session is to allow those of us that have been shy to ask questions. We have this question to ask, we cannot ask because you feel that other people are listening and all that. So that space is for you to be able to ask the questions you want to ask and then share. Now, we do not want you to come here and walk away and just like all oh, these people just talk, talk, talk. We want you to leave here and be able to implement what you have heard what you have learned. And so that is why we have that session. So we will quickly go into that session and um, we'll be back in a bit. Um, normally uh, when we started, we started with 30 minutes, but this time around we will just do 15 minutes and we will be back. Technical, are you ready for us? So just yes, stay yes, where I'm you ready. are, just stay where you are. 
you'll be put into different rooms. So we'll just spend a few minutes in, in those rooms. Um, there are facilitators who would hold that space. And then we will come back here and listen to the master coach, Raphael. All right, guys, thank you.
Yeah, some here, please, some here.
Welcome back, welcome back. But continue. Who was handed on the breakout room? Good day, Master Coach. I am here. I am fully in the room. Great morning. <laughs> good, good afternoon here. Great, Master great Coach, afternoon. good afternoon here. Great afternoon. Happy to hear from great you, afternoon. hear your voice, and to, and to greet you particularly. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the a pleasure, pleasure is mine sister yeah it's always thank a you. pleasure mm -hmm. thank you could, could Julia go ahead or oh, should I just take over oh okay I think we are just left with a few persons to join us um then we would begin in just a few seconds. Let's confirm that from Technica. Technica, are we good? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. Thank the you. Other ones are having, the other ones are having technical issues in their places. So I think they're going to fix it from their Zoom. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Jay. Thank you so much, everyone working to make this possible. Thank you, the facilitators that have held the sessions and are back here. Thank you. So we would um, would listen to the master coach now. Coach, uh, how many minutes do I have? Master coach, we never get tired of listening to you. <laughs> we never get tired of listening we to you. We have the intention for a meeting. Okay, we Is just 10, have 10, 10 minutes 10. to close in. So we'll give you five okay, minutes. Ten. <laughs> okay, five minutes. That's that's Thank good you. enough. Okay, we actually took uh, take something away from the previous teaching. I think it was just awesome. Uh, practical life experience and um I believe one on the way to, to really, really grow is not just to accumulate information, but is also to witness the experience of others. Uh, because faith come by hearing. Uh, if you don't hear, you, you're not gonna develop your faith. Sometimes we don't believe it because we never see anybody or we never witness the result that we are after. Um, so uh, I, I'm so, 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 you know, I, 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 I'm so thankful for the experience of, uh, for those that share from a personal experience. Now, since we are talking about how to develop a product, I, I want you to put the first, uh, first three, challenge you ever overcome in your own life the first the three challenge main challenge that you overcome yourself in your own life and you can look back and say you know what i was suck at this and now i'm great at it put in a chat room three things that you were not good at it at all and you know there's also so many people out there that are not good at it and you were really, really bad at it. But for some reason, you overcome, you overcome that challenge. Now it's not a problem for you. Um, other people even look at you and be like, wow, I wish I could overcome my own challenge that way. Give me those three things very quick. What are some of the three things in your life? That could be anywhere. That could be the way you put your makeup. You were stuck and putting a makeup on now. People think that you are a model. 
You know, that can be the way you braid your hair. That can be the way you dress. That can be the way you actually raise your kids. That can be the way you cook. That can be the way you dress. That can be the way you take care of your own clothes. That can be the way you take care of children. Any little thing, any little thing. Give me three things that you were so, so bad at it. I mean, you was give yourself zero. Now, people are giving you 100 or A. And even you feel so great about it. Because once upon a time, you was suck, and then now you are great. Give me those three things. Okay, Coach Annabelle said, waiting to be everything for everybody. Wow. Waiting, wanting to be everything for everybody. Do you know how dangerous is that? But now she went from being shocked to, yo, I know how to put a break. I know my spot. I know how to organize. I know how to say no. I know how to say yes. I know how to say maybe. You know there's people that don't who don't know how to say no. Everything is yes, yes, yes. Are you gonna come? Yes. Where are you? I'm on my way. When they are sleeping, are you gonna come in? Yes. They are afraid to say no. Now she learned how to go from zero, being soft at it, to be great at it. Uh, and I want to give you the reason. Coach Andre, fear of failure, fear of people opinion. Three, discipline. She learned how to deal with fear of failure, fear of people opinion, and then discipline. She developed discipline. Coach Colette, able to say no. Yeah, powerful. I see people in jail because they don't know how to say no. I see people broke because they don't know how to say no. They have not developed the muscle to be saying no. Let me read a few more. Coach Nolu, procrastination, stepping out of my comfort zone. Wow. Once upon a time, you don't, you don't you know how to move the needle, but now you know how to do it. You know how to be uncomfortable, yet be comfortable. You know how to fix the fear of unknown and get something out of it. Why am I asked for all this? We are talking about how to raise, how to develop a product, how to develop a source of income, how to get a client to pay you before you get in business. Each one of you already have a niche. Everything you successfully going through, you was the lack. You knew how painful it was. You were ready to pay the price for anybody to teach you to go from this suck to now. Have the full confidence. Have your chest up. Feel great the way you are feeling. You were ready to pay the price for it. You were ready to pay anybody to show how to put a makeup on. So you can look like the most beautiful lady on earth. You are ready to pay the price, anything you can pay. And you master all this skill. Why don't you go around and look at those that are suffering from it? You already have a system, you have a product, you have a service. Why don't you get paid for it? Why don't you get paid for it? I, I probably share my little story with some of you guys. Guys, I was broke. We were broke. We didn't even know how broke we were. We didn't have a penny. I asked my dad, Dad, how much were you making per year? He said he was make some year he could make hundred dollars a year. He even confessed that there was some year that he didn't touch up to fifty dollars for the whole year. That's 
my head of family, the person that was taking care of nine kids and the nephew and all that was not able to have $50 for the whole year. And, 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 and when I look at it and say, wow, I've been to this journey, so broke. And, and, and I went from zero to the way I can present a $250 million portfolio. The bigger thing here is not just my result. It's the pathway. It's what I've been through that I can take that and say, you know what, Coach Nolu, you can also follow this step. I can take out of me like a book and give to other people. Matter of fact, most of the wealthy people, it's just that when they get to a point, they start give the recipe to other people. Like, hey, if you do this this way, you're going to be successful. Please. I want to tell you that you already master so much. There's so much in you. There's so much content already in you. You are a business in motion. You are a mall, but you must cash out. You must cash out. You know how to do it. Don't tell me that, oh, I need to go learn. No, you did for yourself. At certain point, you didn't know how to be organized. Now you know how to organize. There's so many people with the life that are chaos. They're ready to pay for somebody to help them. At some point, you didn't know how to cook. Now you can cook. Why don't you teach other people how to do it and get paid? At some point, let what everybody say here, let what most of the people here say, glad to talk about public speaking. Do you know how many people would rather die than speak in public? Imagine if you could just have a class once a week to teach public speaking. It's all really in you. You have what it's going to take to be successful. You are equipped. You prove it already. You prove it. I don't care how small it is. Maybe just raise your kid, mentor your children. As a small as the little thing like that. Just dress, put your own makeup, fix your hair. You already have a product. You have service. You have a system. Go out there and sell it. Go out there and sell it. I make way more money show people how to do what I'm showing. Sure. Then try to keep doing. Take advantage of it. You already have a product, you have a system, and you have a service. Matter of fact, in the school of business on 365, I took almost a month to talk about how to develop a product, a, a product portfolio. If I tell you guys some of the things I do to make money, you're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe it. What you experience, you can show them and make money. Last, uh, last year, I received close to close, close to $16,000 from Air France. I have a link and account with them. Anytime any of my friends, you know, since I travel a lot, I negotiate a discount rate with them. And they give me a discount rate for first class. Now, when I travel, uh, uh, I got that, and I told them, you know what? I want to refer my friend also, and I want my friend to have my discount rate because they're my friend. So I, they make me a link. I take that link and send to my friend. I know anybody that want to travel. I say, well, instead of travel, economy, I pay $2,000 from United States to Africa, travel first class and pay $3,500 instead of $12,000. That is a regular price. Now, that's my deal. I negotiate. So when I refer somebody, Air France give me $500, and my friend get to save almost $8,000. You know, now I'm making money. My little discount deal, I'm passing on to my friends. They can benefit what I already negotiated. They didn't know it. 
and from pay me and I get better loyalty for my friend. They're like, man, I love first class now. I can lay down and go to sleep and pay almost the price of the economy. What am I saying? Every single problem you solve for yourself is a well that you just created. You can just pass around and make a killing. You have product in you. You have service in you. You have system in you because you are a problem solver. Just like what our speaker was saying, think outside the box. And that's what you are doing every day. But you are not collecting for it. I want you to go out there and do now. And if you are not in a school of 365, go in that school. I want to go back in there and show people how to develop multiple sources of income. I, I mean, I, I, every single person is supposed to have at least 100 sources of income. It doesn't have to be $1 million per source. If it, at the end of the year, I get 16000 from Air France, I get here, I get there, I get there. From 200 sources, when I put together, it's so much money. I have my private lake that I turn to a private club. People come and fish in for $100. If they don't fish in, it, it's not serve me anything. So at the end of the month, I collect $7,000 from just people come and fish in. Every little thing you can leverage what you already have. I was listening to my younger sister. She had three cars. Now, one of her cars, she put that for lease because she's not using all the time. And she's collecting money from that lease to pay insurance for all her costs. So now it's, it's a free insurance. Think outside the box. Solution, your solution. Share with other people and get paid. There's no other way. There's no other way. You already you have so much money. When I see people, I, see, I tell them, I mean, you're a multimillionaire in dollar. They're like, how? Ah, where's the money? I say, you are joking. All the problems you have been solving, I can pick up the pain and write down 50 problems that you know how to solve. And people are begging, are crying for it. That who can help me with this thing? If you are still hard for, for you, we have a class that we're going to start, I think probably next month. It's a one-on-one -on -one coaching with some of the great coach. I'm going to be in a home, in a room like this, and take you, and we'll do an inventory. Get out whatever greatness that can come out of you and turn it into a product so you can start getting paid. Thank you, Cordelia, and the team for this great, great meeting. Uh, I, I believe we all learned so much, and I'm looking forward to see you next Sunday. Thank you so much, Master Coach. Um, in just a very few minutes, you've been able to make magic, 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 magic. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Let's give Master Coach all the hats that we can over and over and over. Thank you so, so much. So when we're talking about determining the need um, of a product, the customer's need for a product, you know it already. You look within yourself. It has been said so many times and Master Coach has summarized it so well, so, so well, so, so well. What was that thing you needed yourself? Master Coach says that there are a lot of persons out there who are also in need, just as you were, who had challenges, just as you used to have. And so you have the answers, you have overcome. So go out there and make other people overcome too. Okay. So um, we just have a few minutes to close the session. Do we have questions for the master coach? Do we have questions that couldn't be answered in the um, private sessions? You can ask your question now. No question? Okay. All right, if nobody's asking questions, that means we all had a lovely time and we truly did understand everything that has been talked about today. So we would um, invite Coach Stephanie. Coach Stephanie, are you there? Are you ready yeah, for yeah. us? Okay, Technical, can you make Stephanie co-host? 
so that she can share her screen. Uh, for those of us who want to travel out of the country, and um, it's been so challenging. Some of us have spent so much money giving to agents to get us visa, paying money to wrong people, trying so hard to get admissions abroad. Guess what? I lead global exchange makes it so easier. And that is what um, Stephanie would be taking us through right now. All right, thank you so much, Coach Julia. Good afternoon again, once more, everyone. So today I'm just going to give a brief description of Alif Global Exchange because of time. Alif Global Exchange is one of the youngest products of Alif Global Institute, and is mostly focused with those who want to study and work abroad. So here we're going to be talking about the brand, what ID Global Exchange is all about, its vision, its objectives, its target countries, target groups, its services, how the services works, and finally, the packages. Now, ID Global Exchange is a company that aims to provide the opportunity for Africans to travel all, about, all around the world, meaning that if anyone aims to study or work abroad, Alif Global Exchange is there to give the opportunity to people who want to study and work abroad. And also it is made up of a team of experts who are there to help these people to study and work abroad. Now, what is their vision? The vision of Ali Global Ex Exchange is to provide the opportunity for Africans worldwide to work and study abroad in other countries. When we say we provide the opportunity to work and study abroad, it means that we are worldwide. We are there in African countries such as uh, uh, Congo, South Africa, and as well, we are in Europe and America. So we are there to help Africans study and work abroad. Now, talking of his objectives, um, Ali Global Exchange, it targets colleges and universities around the world, assist our clients with visa application and processing. We help our clients to get admissions into schools abroad and get jobs offers abroad for those who want to work abroad. Okay. And finally, we help with accommodation, assistance, visa application for our clients. Now, talking of our target countries, Ali Global Exchange is available all around the world. It is in America, countries in America such as Canada, the USA. It's in Africa such as uh, South Africa, Congo. Uh, we are also in Europe, European countries such as Belgium, France, and finally, we are also in the United Kingdom. Now, our target group, most of our clients are those who want to study and work abroad. So we have high school students. We have those who just obtained the advanced level on baccalaureate. So those are high school students who are maybe aiming to study abroad or following their bachelor's degree. So we are there to um, help those type of students. We have undergraduate students, which are those students who um, already have a bachelor's, um, sorry, already have a bachelor's degree, yes. Maybe diplomas, certificate, I want to pursue uh, postgraduate or master's degree. We also have graduate students, maybe those who want to pursue their master's degree, PhD, and also finally anyone interested in working or studying abroad. Now we have two main services, which is the study abroad services and the work abroad services. Now talking of the study abroad services, we have a step of procedures which we, we, we follow to help our clients. The first step is uh, finding the university or college for our client, meaning that using our database system, the client will be able to find his specific college or program based on the eligibility requirements for that particular course. Then finally, we we'll apply to a program. Here, we help our clients now to apply to the chosen program. But before applying to this chosen program, our team will first of all, 
review your documents and examine them to make sure that you are not just applying to get rejected to that particular pro uh, program. So that's why I say you are, you are you'll be admitted based on the eligibility requirements and your and your and your course. And the next step now is to get admission. Here, when we upload the required documents to the university of your choice or the program of your choice, you get admission. Here, our team, after uploading your documents, will follow up your documents and make sure that you are granted admission into that particular university or program. And finally, when you finally get your admission, our team is there to help you process your visa application. Processing your visa application, most students will need a study permit, maybe, or maybe authorization to study in that particular country. So our team is there to help those particular type of students. We are here to help you with your study abroad dream. Now for our work abroad program, it's mainly for professionals who want to continue their career in a different country. So let's say, for example, if you're a professional, let's say a nurse in Cameroon, and you want to go to Germany to work as a nurse, Ali Global Exchange is there to help you achieve that particular dream. So the first step is that when you come to us, we examine your documents to see that you are qualified for that particular job abroad. The second step is awarding you a contract in that particular job. We can award you a contract based on your eligibility and based on your qualification in that particular job. But however, if you are not qualified in that particular job, I lead global, there's also an opportunity for us to give you maybe uh, a particular training to get qualified for that particular job. And then we award you your contract. Meaning that if you go to that country, you can as well, you can wear school to get qualified in that job. And then we award you, you work part-time in that particular job. Meaning that you are schooling and working in that particular job in order for you to really get the qualification you need to be a full worker in that job. And then we are there to help you. After giving you your contract, we're helping you with your visa application. After your visa is being approved by the embassy of your chosen country, then we'll now help you with your travel and installation. When you travel, we're also there to accompany our clients in their countries. When you reach your country, Ali Global Exchange has partners who are there to accompany you on your arrival in that particular country. So talking of our packages, Ali Global Exchange has four packages, three packages which are study abroad packages, and the fourth package is mainly for those who want to study abroad. So for the basic package, these are mainly for clients who just come for consultation from the Ali Global team, meaning that here we'll just give you the list of universities you wish to travel to, we'll give you your program, we, we examine your documents and we can tell you the best program to apply to. So you as a client now be responsible, responsible for registering yourself into that particular country. Now talking of the pro package, here is consultancy and also the services of Ali Global Exchange. Here when the client approaches us, we are there to examine the documents of that client and then we register the client into his or her preferred university. And then after that, the client now will take over to proceed to his or her visa application, accommodation, and on other travel, other travel documents. The client takes care of those things. Now, our premium package is mainly for those clients who require maybe all the services of Ilib Global Exchange Experts meaning that we are there to register the clients into their university. We are there to help the client for their visa application. We are there to also help the client to, for accommodation. Ali Global Exchange will also provide the client with the student loans for those clients who don't have the opportunity to pay their tuition deposit. We are also there to help the client with proof of funds meaning that if you don't have enough funds to prove for your period of stay in that particular country, Ali Global Exchange is there to help the client prove for their funds. 
but then we'll have to go through some steps and maybe some modalities in order for us to do to perform that particular service for you. And finally, the ultimate package is for those who want to work abroad. Like I was saying, it's for professionals. So when you come to us, we are there to first of all, we examine your documents, we we'll give you a contract based on your qualification. Then before traveling, we we'll also help you with your visa application. And finally, we help with your accommodation and travel assistance. So because of time, uh, I just had to rush things, but if you need more information from us, I'll just leave our contacts in the, in the chat room and you can get to us through WhatsApp call or even email. So thank you, Coach Julia. If there are any questions, I can answer. Okay, thank you so, so, so much for that presentation. Coach Stephanie, that was very well articulated. Um, if you have questions, you can put it in the chat and which Stephanie will take note of your questions and she would, um, she would find a way to get to you. She'll definitely get to you. Just put your question in the chat and she would attend to you. Okay, Technical, are you there? Technical, if you're there, let's hear from the School of Business. Technical, can we hear from the School of Business? And that how you can turn your passion into profit. Do you have difficulties taking your business to the next level? Highly Global Business Coaching School is the answer. Highly Global School of Business offers your business mastery courses, which serve as a tool to get you as an entrepreneur, your projects and business ideas prepared for the contemporary and competitive business space. In the school, you will be taught courses that will help you evaluate new business opportunities and transform existing ideas into real business, such as how to establish a good business, psychology of sales, how to set the price of a product, emotional understanding of purchasing, rebranding and growth strategy, the inner circle in business, just to name a few. Register now at www.highlyglobalinstitute.com or call the numbers on your screen. Highly Global, adding value to others. Have you ever wondered how you can turn? Okay, sorry about that technical glitch. I, I, I think from my end here, yeah, the audio was not so great. But that was about the Ili Global School of Business 365, where we learn how to become the best entrepreneurs that we can be from wherever we are in the world. And so this is an invitation to all of us. Um, if you're here and you have not enrolled into the Ili Global School of Business, it is an opportunity for you to come and get enrolled into the program. Um, if, you are, if you know someone who needs to get into the program, you should talk to them to get into the program. Because guess what? Life is sweet when you and your loved ones grow. You grow in wealth, you grow in mindset. So you can be at the top of your game and then everybody around you is suffering. It doesn't make any sense. So whilst you're up leveling yourself, you should make sure that every other person around you gets to have some, um, some taste of success. So I want to say thank you so much to everyone that is here. And I want to invite you um, to learn more about the School of Business. Join us tomorrow, 8 p.m. Um, we will be having the Monday vision. Um, it's going to be in English also. So um, you can join us and get to learn about the School of Business and get to learn about some of the products of ILIB. 
The Monday Vision is a leadership um, program where we get to learn some more about leadership. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for doing so well. Thank you so much, Marie Claire from um, Ethiopia. Thank you so much, Coach Aida. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Ireka, for your support with technical. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you, Annabelle. Thank you, everyone. I'm not able to call everybody's name, but just know that um, we appreciate your presence here and we love you. Thank you so much. The great, great master coach, Rafael Gine, for making this possible. Thank you so much. Do have an amazing day. God bless you. Thank you. Goodbye to everybody. Bye. <laughs> Let me leave. Goodbye. Bye bye, dear. God yeah. bless you too. Bye bye. How are you? Very well. Yes. 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 Thank you much. for being here. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>